How does UCLA, after that performance against Arizona, Jane Delora, stop Caleb Williams? I've got some keys for you next on Locked On UCLA. You are Locked On UCLA, your daily podcast on the UCLA Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey everybody, it's your favorite host, it's Zach Anderson, the Oxheimer. Thanks for tuning in to Locked On UCLA. It's free wherever you get your podcasts and it's available, your team, every day. Thanks for making it your first listen each and every day. In the meantime, just letting you know that this episode is brought to you by Bet Bet BetOnline's got you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. And if you can see this one on YouTube, well, thanks for like, commenting, and subscribing. The Twitter wars have begun between Locked On UCLA and Locked On USC. It's on, baby. It's Beat SC Week. Battle for the victory bells. The Bruins look to retain it for the second consecutive year. So how do the Bruins, after getting so, so, so terribly crushed from the Jaden Delora extra flexibility, whatever it may be, the extra plays, wh- whimsically running around, making the Bruins' defense look terrible. How do they do that against arguably the best quarterback in the Pac-12 at making defenses look foolish in tackling him? That's Caleb Williams. That's Caleb Williams. DTR, Caleb Williams, we can get into it about how their numbers are not too far off. They're pretty similar in terms of production. But the problem is, and this game will need to be won for the Bruins, especially with key defensive stops. With Chip Kelly recently at practice, he was questioned, how does UCLA feel after coming off Jaden Delores? Escapability, ability to move around the pocket and evade the pass rush time and time again, which is exactly what Caleb Williams does to perfection, dating from his Oklahoma days, when he's making people look foolish trying to tackle him on big third downs, to what he's done this year into leading this matchup for the Bruins against the Trojans, how do the Bruins bring down this 6'1 sophomore who's only 19 years old at the moment and bring him down and just kind of like Michael Penix Jr., how do they stop a lethal threat? Well, for the Bruins, this is what Chip Kelly had to say. Well, he says, coming off that Arizona game, I think our scheme is sound. Mind you, this is without Billy McGovern the last three games. He's missed the last three games, hasn't been there, and still, from what I've heard, still hasn't been to practice. So that's the defensive coordinator who hasn't even been there to help truly implement things. And Chip Kelly wasn't giving things, giving true indication as to what's going on with McGovern. I think our scheme is sound, said Chip Kelly. Our players do a great job with it. And when plays break down, we need to do a better job of sticking to receivers. Kind of paraphrasing there when the play breaks down. So he's saying they're overall doing well. A lot of UCLA fans, maybe myself included, would think differently, but it is true that when play breaks down, especially with Jane Delora, like he did on Saturday night against the Bruins, when the play breaks down, they need to stick to receivers. And kind of interesting, he says, we don't compare Jaden to Caleb. They're different players, different schemes, different ideas. And the keys are to tackle well, keep the ball in front of them. And we need to do everything that a good defense does soundly. Those are kind of his quotes coming into this one based on post-practice interviews heading into this one. What does that mean? What does that mean? Well, again. He also said our defense has done a really good job. We've got to do better in their situational situations, such as taking care of the QB scramble. What does Caleb Williams do? Well, his numbers so far for the sophomore transfer to SC, over 3,000 yards passing, 31 touchdowns, two interceptions, has 80 carries, close to 300 yards rushing, and six touchdowns. And the thing about this USC matchup for the Bruins, Travis Dye, the leading rusher for USC, close to 90 to 100 yards per game, got injured in their most recent game against Colorado and is out for the year. Sad injury. Hope he recovers well. But it's going to lead the Bruins to truly key on Caleb Williams. And a lot of that going back to Bo Nix, going to Michael Penix Jr., where the Bruins succeeded and didn't succeed, and even to Jaden Delora for a big, for a big extent there. It's going to come down to UCLA's ability to contain the quarterback and not let them break outside contain and not let them run around to the backfield like their heads, like chickens with their head cut off, running back and forth, running around, make it look like a circus show. 
in order for this game not to be 76-77 or some ridiculous score into the fourth quarter. USC overall offensively is one of the rare offenses that is actually one of the best at converting third downs better than the Bruins. Alongside Washington, USC converts 55% of their third downs to UCLA's 52. So for Caleb Williams, what does he do? He faces a third and long, he weaves out trouble, and he escapes it making big rushes happen, evades sacks, evades tackles, and hits his receivers downfield. So he knows how to do that. But I've kind of noticed a bit of a trend of his worst passing, of his worst completion rates and the one game that SC lost against Utah, albeit they did score 40 plus points and it took a late Utah two point conversion to beat him. At the end of the day, UCLA only needs to outscore SC, but here's a way to do so. And it's come down into a similar, similar like set of circumstances that I brought and I said about how the Bruins need to slow down Michael Penix Jr. The Bruins need to not only hit the quarterback, they need to bring him down. They need to get as many hits, as many tackles, and as many sacks and tackles for loss as possible in this game because USC has been susceptible to giving up a sack. They're not the Oregons or the Washingtons who don't give up sacks. They do give up quite a few tackles for losses, uh, tackles for loss offensively. So this is one where Leatu Latu, the Murphy Twins, whoever it may be, the linebackers, whether it's Calvert, yeah, even Mo Osling coming in from every John, 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 whatever it is, people just got to get in the backfield and bring down the Trojans for loss after loss after loss. Caleb Williams, three worst completion percentage games from what I noticed against Colorado. Mind you, his worst completion percentage games when they're under 60% because he's one of the best QBs in the country, one of the better QBs, I should say, in completion percentage overall. Above 60, he's about 64%. And when he gets lower than 60%, the one thing that is the same against Utah in their one loss, the Utes had four sacks of Caleb Williams. Four sacks. In their most recent game against Colorado for the Trojans, remember, that game was 3-2 Colorado after a quarter. Now, the Bruins, we can't exactly make fun of that anymore or anything about it, but just know that Caleb Williams only had 53% completion percentage, even through a pick against the Colorado defense, and was sacked three times before USC eventually broke it open against the terrible Colorado team. Against Oregon State, where USC earlier in the season was deadlocked in a battle, in a late game battle against the Beavers, who very recently were ranked one of those dark horses in the Pac-12 before Washington kind of grabbed that from them. Against Oregon State, they only sacked Caleb Williams twice, but it only takes a couple of sacks to fluster him. And here's a key, key stat. The Oregon State defense had six tackles for loss against the USC offense. Washington State, and mind you, that Oregon State game, Caleb Williams had 44% of his passes completed. Against Washington State, where Caleb Williams barely completed over half his passes, five tackles for loss and a sack. So the big thing is for the Bruins, every time Williams has been sacked more than once, someone, it looks like on the opposition when they face SC, the opposition is getting and flustering the quarterback, which is exactly what needs to be dialed up. A Leatu Latu, a Grayson Murphy, whatever, the Murphy twins, they need to get in the backfield, enforce the pressure. And even if it's not just multiple sacks, as Washington State really kept USC to 30-ish points, Five tackles for loss, and you can really fluster Williams. So the biggest thing is, yes, it can come down to simply, as Chip Kelly said it, tackle well, keep the ball in front. And how you do that, you force pressure, you get some tackles for loss, you get those sacks, put USC behind the chains, and force Caleb Williams to throw and keep the ball in front. That is how the Bruins will be, can be, and shall be successful against the Trojans. It's another matter of doing it. But the Bruins need to, with a lethal pass rushing threat like Leatu Latu's been and the Murphy and Grayson Murphy's been this year for UCLA. That's just how dominant they need to be when it comes to finding ways to stop Caleb Williams. That's just how it'd be. Is it a safe way? Is it a safe bet? Who knows? But 
you know, if there's a way to secure your home right now with home security and you've been putting it off, you'll want to listen up. Right now, Locked On UCLA listeners, you can order the number one rated Simply Safe home security system for over 50% off, their biggest offer of the year, and you do not want to miss it. Simply Safe was named the best home security system of 2022 by U.S. News and World Report for a third year in a row. In emergencies, they've got 24-7 professional monitoring agents that use fast protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe that captures critical evidence and verifies the threat is real and gets you priority police response. Again, they can, can you can say control of your system anytime, anywhere, arm or disarm, unlock for guests, access cameras, or adjust your system settings. That's all you can do, whether you're at home or not. Don't miss your chance to save big on the only security system can truly be recommended, right? 50% off any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on college. The biggest discount of the year during the holiday season, so don't wait. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on college. There's no safe like Simply Safe. All right. Now that we've talked about ways that UCLA can truly be successful, rushing the quarterback, remember, UCLA's got to get off the field on third down against this USC offense. This game is going to be won or lost between UCLA and SC when it comes to turnover margin. SC has been the best defensively, one of the best teams in the country, at winning the turnover margin. Every time when you go game-by-game comparison for the Trojans, they've won the turnover margin, or they've been tied three times. Arizona State, Washington State, and Cal have been the only three to have not lost the turnover margin, and Utah only allowed the Trojans to get one turnover off of them and then went down and scored while forcing some pressure against Caleb Williams. So it's going to come down to the Bruins for turnover margin and the likes of third down conversions, and that's going to come down to how much pressure UCLA can get on Caleb Williams. USC this season offensively has been so successful on third downs. Most recently against Colorado, the Trojans... 9 of 12 on third down. 9 of 18 against Oregon State or earlier this year. That's when they won. Arizona State, 8 of 9 on third down. Against Arizona, 11 of 17. And if you can look at those third down conversion rates, especially against Arizona, if you kind of compete, compare games, well, UCLA struggled against third down. Recently, those third down numbers have been failing, and the Bruins haven't been truly as successful as they would have liked on third downs, albeit they've sometimes picked it up on picked up the slack when it comes to fourth down conversions, which they didn't against Arizona. This game against USC, turnover margin, and even if it's just one fumble, as it was for UCLA and DTR against against Arizona, that could really be the costly difference because USC has only had one fumble lost all year. Caleb Williams, although he just threw an interception against Colorado, only has two. But DTR, if you compare these two quarterbacks, Again, Williams, over 3,000 yards passing, 31 touchdowns, two interceptions, six on the ground as well, and 283 yards with a 64% completion rate. DTR, 2,300, close to 2,400 yards, because he's got 2,385, 20 touchdowns in the year, 71% completion percentage, four interceptions, not a bad mark, even only a couple fumbles lost. And with only four more carries than Caleb Williams, DTR has 463 rushing yards and seven rushing touchdowns. So DTR, well, doesn't exactly have the escapability as, say, Caleb Williams. He does have the better running game ability, if that makes sense. He kind of turns it more into a threat when running the football. And, of course, we all know about the hurdles. So comparing those two and DTR completion percentage has been good. And if you remember that Ethan Garber says about 300 yards passing, Well, it's kind of some games that DTR missed against Alabama State where they pulled them early where he could have loaded up on the offensive stats there. And maybe they might look a little similar between Williams and DTR. Overall, it's going to come down to how good can DTR hold on to the football, which has been, for most part of the season, actually really good at taking care of the football. And can the Bruins, in addition to that pressure, force a rare this season, very rare, Caleb Williams turnover, if Colorado can do it, if the Bruins can fluster them early, jump on them, get a rare turnover, is the defense up for the challenge, whether the defensive coordinator is there in the building at the Rose Bowl 
at the stadium with the crazy packed crowd that we're expecting. A packed crowd compared to whatever it's been all season long, a loud, boisterous atmosphere where UCLA can come through, get those third downs, and hold USC to a much lower third down clip than they've been accustomed to all season long. Even for the most part against Utah, SC still converted five of the nine third downs. So in the end, despite all this want in wishing for UCLA's defense to try and inflict and have crazy good numbers, it might just turn into a game where which quarterback was better on that day. It might be 62 to 61 or something bonkers like that. And what might be a high scoring, more Big 12 esque score that we've seen in recent years or whatever it is, AAC, the AC, whatever school, you know, the ACC, whether it's North Carolina playing or, you know, App State, whatever game it may be you want to go through, the AAC, however it goes, UCLA just needs to find a way to get off the field on third down and, you know, not lose the turnover margin or maybe, hopefully, force that one turnover that Williams may cough up once and hope that the offense doesn't cough it up right back and dominate. In the end, third down turnover margin will be the story of this one, whether one team runs away with it or it could be the one stop, the extra possession that is gained in this game that can truly make the difference between UCLA and SC. Yeah, it's going to be the difference between the Bruins ringing the victory bell, keeping it blue, and keeping it for a second consecutive season. And for the third time in Chip Kelly's era, it would be his third win against SC. As we remember, Jim Moore was good in the beginning before it kind of came back down to earth. Can UCLA, in an all-important, all-important crosstown battle against USC with all the trash talk coming from the other Locked On podcast from across town, we'll just tell you the facts. UCLA needs to win this game, and they need to do it by forcing pressure and kind of getting back to what they did offensively. And we'll build throughout the week in terms of what UCLA needs to do offensively, which is a little more the same and be more efficient, which we'll talk about throughout the rest of the week with this podcast. But for UCLA, again, pressure, pressure, pressure. If you can grab that turnover, be a ball hawk. You need to take control. No bobbled. If it's one pick early, like we remember 10 years ago with Barkley throwing it, whether it's the big emblematic sack of Barr knocking down Barkley, you need those big plays that can be iconic in this rivalry to try and beat what is a rejuvenated front on the other side from across town to UCLA is trying to make the mark like, yeah, we're coming off a setback, but we still know that we can compete, albeit with some help for a Pac-12 title, and needing this win against SC can really vault UCLA up the standings. And so, of course, talk some trash, which is what truly is what we need to do, whether it's a DTR hurdle and whatever it is that can change the game. So again, Force the pressure. Get tackles for loss. USC is without their top rushing threat. It's all leaning on Caleb Williams' shoulders, which he can handle, but can the Bruins handle his ability to maneuver the pocket? That will be the difference in this one. If they get run around like Jaden De- Delora did to them last week, then the Bruins, well, it's going to be a long day at the offense office if the Bruins can't go down the field and score offensively. That will be the story for UCLA. In the meantime, we'll we'll shift over to basketball as we the Bruins, they're three and they're top ten off their fresh off their win against Norfolk State. But if you're betting that all these important games, well, bet online's your number one source, if you think about it, for betting info this season. UCLA and football actually underdogs at home against the Trojans coming off their loss against Arizona. Well, maybe UCLA fares better as the underdog, because let's see, I, I would love to take UCLA with the points and take them out right. Bet online, your number one source for your sport betting info, stats, news, and analysis. They've got the latest trends and odds for every professional and amateur league out there. Football, basketball, even the World Cup about to start. Esports, they've got it all with Bet Online. They've got podcasts dedicated to betting and everything with that. You can find those at Bet Online as well. They're the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website now or use your mobile device. Search it up. Bet Online, where the game starts. It's where it starts. In the meantime, as we wrap up today's Locked On UCLA podcast, once again, Zach Anderson, Yoxhammer saying, all right, let's get excited. UCLA basketball, we can't forget about them. They've had three relatively soundly easy games at home against Sac State, the least amount of scoring the Bruins have done, 76 points. 
put up 90 against Long Beach. And apparently throughout the broadcast, Don McLean, with the Bruins leading and eventually winning by 30 against Norfolk State, 86 to 56 to improve to 3-0. So they played much better against Norfolk State than they did against Long Beach. Even though that game in the first half was relatively kind of close, Norfolk State staying in it just before a slight run before the half for the Bruins. But then UCLA comes through and gets the dub and ends up dominating in the second half against the Norfolk State team that only lost by 17 to Baylor on the road and veteran guys from an NCAA tournament team from a year ago for the Spartans of Norfolk State, and UCLA really kept them off the scoreboard. I I told you guys about how Joe Bryant was their leading scorer with 17 per game, just put up 24 points against the likes of Baylor. UCLA, second straight game, they've kept a leading scorer really off the scoreboard. Bryant, two for eight, three turnovers and four points. What they do to Joe Murray on the Friday night? UCLA had him about 3 of 11, I believe, with like 10 points. Horrible shooting percentage. Although Chris Banks did for Norfolk State. Good night, 17 points on 8 of 11. When it comes to keying in on the opposition's best shooter, three-point shooting percentages have been down for the UCLA opposition as the Bruins have come through and practically dominated winning every game by 20-plus, putting almost 80 in every game, and setting themselves up for a crucial Vegas weekend against Illinois and whoever they play on the Sunday, November 20th. UCLA, let's go over some numbers as we react to this, right? Jalen Clark, well, he's been the story of the season, right? 7 of 11 shooting, 5 of 8 from downtown. And if he's shooting 5 of 8 from downtown, as he starts to feel that spark, not only defensively, but offensively and from deep beyond the arc, then if he becomes a scoring threat, 15 points per game, dare I say, for Jalen Clark to 20, UCLA can almost be unbeatable this season as Clark led all scores with 19 points. UCLA with six in double figures, including all 10 starters. Jaime Hawkins Jr., 12 with nine point, 12 points on nine shots, four assists. Tiger Campbell, seven assists, 11 points, albeit on 11 shots. Not the most efficient night for Tiger, albeit seven assists, Zero turnovers. Amari Bailey, after a not too good turnover performance, eleven point from against Long Beach. Bailey distributing the basketball, five assists, eleven points on only six shots, making five of six. And UCLA seeing Bailey already growing from game to game, taking care of the basketball. A Dembona, his second game as a Bruin. What did he do? Ten points, five rebounds, but a key note here. He didn't lead the Bruins in rebounds, but four offensive rebounds, nine offensive rebounds overall, really leading the charge in second chance points. The Bruins having 14 second chance points all helped because of a Dembona hitting the glass, getting the double figures, and with a couple of blocks, altering some shots from the Spartans. UCLA dominating this game, 34 points in the paint. And while Norfolk State ended up having more, UCLA the 34 points in the paint shooting 11 of 25 from downtown. Norfolk State, only 2 of 14. The Bruins got to the free throw line 18 times. Adembona, only 4 of 8. So that's a scary thing going down the stretch where your big man isn't exactly the most accurate when it comes to shooting from the free throw line, which might cause him to be off the floor as a late game liability in much closer games. That might be coming up soon for the Bruins. But in the end, here are the things to look at. UCLA. Seven turnovers offensively. Their own, they only had seven turnovers, and only Kenneth Nuba and looks like Ta- Jaime Hawkins Jr. had two to lead all team, all players for the Bruins. All right. Well, what did they do against Norfolk State? Well, a veteran group coming off a tournament appearance, the Bruins did only force 13, one of their lowest totals of the season, but the Bruins still scored 16 points off those 13 turnovers, getting 10 fast break points really going out and leading the charge and turning into easy buckets as UCLA overall, 20 assists sharing the basketball, but eight steals in five blocks. So when you come to seven turnovers, 13 combined steals and blocks, you're not coughing up the basketball as Norfolk State only had four points off of seven UCLA turnovers when UCLA overall shot 57% for the game, got to the paint, got to the line, hit their three balls, Played defense, 
albeit maybe not as crazy as Mick Cronin would have liked. Not as crazy in terms of, all right, crazy deflection. Wasn't exactly a wild game for Jalen Clark with 20 steals. Jalen Clark had two. It didn't even lead the Bruins with the three steals that Tiger Campbell had. But if the Bruins start adding to pickpocketing their opponent, leading to easy buckets, and if they're hitting the three, like David Singleton has so far, Singleton had 11 points off the bench, two of three from downtown, as Singleton has been really spectacular for the fifth-year guard out of L.A. David Singleton in his first three games, 60% from three, 9 of 15, averaging just about 12 points per game. And that's a nice scoring addition off the bench. There's so many ways we can go with this. Of course, Bailey showcasing his growth game in and game out as the freshman, the guy who's supposed to be a high lottery pick, one would assume, come the draft next year in the NBA. But nice to see the growth from Bailey game to game. Adembona figuring it out, getting his game reps in after missing the opening night, coming in altering shots with a couple of blocks, hitting the glass, scoring. Might need to work in that free throw percentage. Hawkes and Tiger back and forth. All right, they've hit double figures pretty much mostly every time. And with Jalen Clark, he is, this point of the season, got to be the MVP for the Bruins. He's done, he looks like the best player. He is the best player. All the talk about Triple J, Jaime Hawkes Jr., Tiger Campbell. You know, you talk the likes of Amari Bailey. We even had a podcast earlier in the summer with how McCronin was hyping up a Dembona, being that likes of the elite player the Bruins could have down low. It's Jalen Clark, who every game has made his presence known, this time more offensively than with the defensive statistics, like blocks and steals and deflections. But he has been the Bruins' best player so far through three games. And can that continue for his neutral site battles against Illinois? against whoever it may be in their next game. I know there's two teams blanking off the top of my head, but at the moment, it's that Friday night showdown against Illinois. And can the Bruins really continue the defensive presence, keeping teams under 70, under 60 for the most part, and continue outscoring teams? Well, the tests are only going to get bigger and tougher and more important as the calendar winds down to the end of 2022. Yet here we are. UCLA 3-0 top 10 and a chance to leap in the next few weeks up these polls before Pac-12 play starts in the beginning of December. 3-0, Mick Cronin's got to be happy. We've got to be happy. As you know, it's time to say goodbye for this podcast today, but just know, go check out Locked On Sports today. Make that your second listen. They've got their big game recaps, big stories across sports, and their take of the day. My take of the day is thanks for making Locked On UCLA your first listen. Hit that subscribe button. Continue to support. Go Bruins. Wipe that Arizona game out the window because UCLA will take it to the Trojans this week. That's right. It's a clap time. And it's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. U C L A. UCLA. B S C. Let's go. It's on. Take your trash out. Locked on USC. Get out of here, Mark. It's time. Zach Anderson, Yoxheimer saying so long. We'll continue. It's rivalry week. The blood is boiling. The hatred is alive. And the Bruins and I, as we all should be, ready to go. This has been Locked on UCLA. Go Bruins.